Do you struggle to implement better data storytelling techniques and want to make effective communication a goal? Well, if so, stick with me for the next few minutes because I'll be demonstrating via example the core lessons that we will teach during our upcoming eight-week online course in which we'll teach you how to plan, create, and deliver your own data story through guided lessons and practice-driven examples. And stick with me until the end where I'll be sharing a limited time special offer to receive a discount on our upcoming cohort, which begins on the 15th of September. Consider this slide, which came from a large organization that recently conducted an advertising test to drive incremental orders. Unfortunately, despite the original creator's best efforts, it didn't drive the intended action that they had hoped for. In our scenario, let's imagine our primary audience member is the marketing manager. And while it was encouraging to see that the ad campaigns helped drive more orders, they were also at a markedly higher customer acquisition cost. As a result of this, we might recommend just pausing to refine our targeting strategy for more efficient growth before resuming investment. Now we have our primary audience member identified and the message that we're looking to share. But before we go into our tools and begin to create our content, a little bit of low tech planning can go a long way. And on the team here, we advocate the use of storyboarding, or to put it another way, the visual outline of your proposed flow. Now, spending a bit of time here at this stage can lead to faster, more efficient creation of your slides further down the road. Our initial storyboard here, as we build it up, first outlines the original goal of the advertising campaign, then explains the test design and results, and finally offers a recommended next step. While our initial storyboard was a pretty good start, it was missing one vital and critical component, tension. Tension is that magical element of story which creates a sense of suspense for our audience who are wondering what's gonna happen next and makes things truly engaging and memorable. Reconsidering our audience and the tension for them in our ad spend story and focusing on the elements of the data that truly matter the original storyboard is rearranged into a narrative, an arc that shifts the focus from the typical linear business update to prioritize the needs and interests of our audience. We turn our attention to our graphs now and transform our visuals using a series of simple yet powerful design tactics. Thinking about the elements of our visual that aren't helping our audience understand the data and then applying sparing color paired with explanatory words. Doing this, we can help convey our main message to our audience, transforming those elements from that busy data table into something more straightforward, while ensuring that we make it clear where we want our audience to look. It's only now that we move away from our low-tech planning tools and begin to create our slides. This becomes a simple transition from our storyboard into our slide software. Following the flow of the narrative arc, leveraging corporate templates, we can build first of all a digital skeleton of the content before then beginning to flesh out the rest of the detail of our presentation. So after refining the content and practicing our delivery, the final presentation for our advertising campaign scenario could look and sound something a little bit like this. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me here today. In today's session we've got a couple of goals. First of all, to discuss the findings from our recent advertising campaign and then use those results to better inform us on what our marketing strategy might be going forward. Now to give ourselves a reminder, we posed ourselves the question at the outset of whether or not higher ad spend would yield more orders and acquire new customers. Now the short answer to this is yes, we can get more orders, but it might not necessarily be the best approach to acquisition and growth. Let me explain. Our test was pretty aggressive. We spent four times the baseline amount to assess the impact on orders compared to the prior period. If we take a look at those orders now, we have three distinct buckets, three blocks of two week periods, starting off with the baseline period, which was from the 22nd of March to the 4th of April. Before then, we had that spending increase of those two separate two week blocks. For the baseline, uh, looking back at the past, we had 439 orders. Now this is pretty consistent with prior weeks and the same period in prior years too. For the test to be successful, we should see higher orders in these testing periods. And we did, but it was just an 8% increase, the modest increase and lower 
than we'd have hoped for, especially given the increased investment. Despite this, though, there was an interesting finding when we looked at the type of customers. So I'm going to break that down now between new and existing. Just shifting the visual type here to 100% stack bars. And if we layer on our new customers at the bottom, we do see that the mix of those did increase during that test. Around about double, actually, which is great news. However, it did come at an added expense. We saw our customer acquisition costs, or CAC for short, markedly increased during that testing period. For context, we went from a CAC amount of $1.1,000 in that baseline period up to $2,200 in those testing periods, two times higher. So while more customers are great, I'm not sure they're that great at double the cost. So to answer the original question, yes, spending more does drive more orders and brings in new customers, but it does drive up the CAC substantially. Therefore, we don't think it's an efficient use of our marketing dollars. Instead, we recommend just taking a step back, pausing for a while and developing better targeting strategies to more efficiently attract new customers. Thank you very much for your time. Check out the transformation from merely showing data to presenting it in a compelling way. And our eight week course is structured with a specific focus for each week's lesson. And so you'll go from transforming raw data and a concept in mind into a truly impactful project by the end. And if you're keen to join us, we'd love to see you in our upcoming cohort. And here's that special offer that I mentioned. For a very limited time only, you can receive 25% discount on the registration price. Details in the video description and also on the screen here as well. I hope you enjoyed this transformation video. I look forward to seeing you again soon, but in the meantime, thanks for watching and goodbye.